How's it going, everyone? Officer Hefe with some more. This is the police, and you know, past three episodes have just been doing good work, just doing general good police work. Uh, you know, there's some horrible situations going on this in the city. Always fights breaking out at the football field. Uh, Newberry, I think you finished your case. Yes. Yes. All right, you can go home. Uh, no. Can't have the day off. All right. So we'll start the day. Uh, just see, see what happens. You know, just keep doing a good job. Keep making money. I think the mafia was supposed to sell some alcohol for us. So, dude, Clementine Burroughs just keeps throwing cash at us. It's awesome. Um, yes, yeah, so we don't have the lead detective. We'll have to wait till tomorrow. Uh, armed robbery. Oh, people are trying to rob the bank, like, literally every day. It's like every day, someone's trying to rob the bank. Alright, this should be enough people to take on these robbers and have enough people left over for any other cases that come up. Another armed robbery at the Civic Center. Oh boy. So we don't have the swap for this one. City Hall. We'll request everything, because we can. Uh, do we hire everybody? I guess we did. We're still waiting for some new applicants in the pool. Vicus Varga, $500. Vicus, come on, man. Situation is more serious than you originally thought. All right, well, we'll send some people. We may not have anyone else for the rest. Armored truck, nearby is a black Jeep with no plates. Uh, I don't want to ram the jeep. If we yell at them to drop their weapons, they're probably going to jump in and try to drive off. If we shoot the bullet, they're probably going to start firing back. So we'll try this one first. They throw a grenade. So we'll hide behind a patrol car. A smoke grenade. So we'll chase them we catch them, we caught them. Our officers are amazing. I mean, you don't really get that much money from selling the money, but, I mean, something's better than nothing. Um, assault at the Ice Prince Cafe. Oh, we'll wait for our officers to get back. Luckily, we have a lot of time. Do we manage to get them all? We did. We'll bring in the automatic weapons. Okay, so I was just trying to get a pretty girl. She went crazy and beat me. I mean, I want to know more about what actually happened here, but we'll send some police. If she beat you up, she deserves to, you know, be arrested. So the assault at Atticus Tower, this is what they didn't want us to go to. For only $500, come on. That ain't nothing. Two dozen scientists are marching. Marching policefully. Some religious fanatics are attacking them. Now a brawl has broken out. All right, well, we'll send, we'll send some officers with the paddy wagon. Uh, what is this? Oh, four stolen cars, huh? was attacked by a patient and slapping him in the face. We have uh, she keeps calling and bothering our person. <laughs> we can send the police to go take this person because they're bothering us. That's pretty cool. All right, and then we'll go send some people to take care of this as well. Oh, she merely slapped him, sir. That's an abuse of emergency services. That guy deserves to go to, go to jail. Uh, we don't we don't have any more people to send. You guys got this. Yeah, 
Yeah, I knew you had it. Uh, abduction in the suburbs. <laughs> I'm glad we were able to arrest that person. Um, let's see, do we have four officers to do this mission? Okay, uh, hold on, hold on. Okay, so we do have four for this one. Yeah, you know, we'll send some people for to take in some stolen cars. And abduction. What? This is, what? Sitting in a van? Alright, that's, that's nothing. Varga. Don't be silly. I won't be paid off for $500. A massive fight at the St. John's Hospital. They're fighting because the guy's not waiting his turn. We'll send, uh... And do we send everybody? I feel like we should keep some people back. Uh, yeah, we'll send four people. Yeah, the girl's adoptive father. Jeez. Freeburg. Chill out for a second. All right, do I put a second song on? You know what, we'll just have a little bit of peaceful silence. Uh, send a couple police to take care of some people, setting your, all right, you know what? I couldn't overlook the assault at the office, but we'll send some people. Wait, what's happening here? Why do I suddenly have someone I can hire on the labor market? Did someone leave? Someone left. Oh. oh ho Ine, you were doing that? Dude, I thought Ine was down with the illegal stuff. 40k? Hey, you're welcome, Miss Chang. Uh, starting to pick up chairs. <laughs> Lower the chairs. That is quite a fight. Um, yeah, well, I guess we need to hire someone to replace Ine. I, I never would have thought it, that he would not, you know, be down with stolen cars, but apparently he wasn't uh, or outraged at the French film. Uh, what, nudity, sex, like... Those are things people can't handle in Freeburg. An explosion at an apartment house. I mean, it's probably just a regular fire, but we'll send people to go investigate it. Ine, Ine, Ine. How, how sad. How sad. All right, double. Okay, what's happening here? They only had two guards, though, right? Why is there so many guys? I feel like we're still missing some frames here. And the smuggling. Okay, so what's happening here? He's an experienced smuggler, capable of smuggling any goods. You always come armed, and believe that's all the protection he needs. Station chief is a morphine junkie. Okay. Stolen car is hidden inside the truck's cargo container. Containers are loaded onto the train cars directly from the truck. Watches while the wait is recorded. For every service, Salas always pays cash. So he would come by himself, right? So he gives the guy some morphine, the station director. Uh, where's the loading? Station chief. Oh. I assume this guy's the station chief and this guy's the guy who loads it. All right, we need some, we need some more frames for that one too. What happened with the mass riot? We got them all? Oh. Civilian got killed. That's not good. Whoa, dirty white coat. He's just finished with his elixir of youth. Yeah, sounds important. Let's uh, 
bring him downtown. So, you know, if I was the mayor, I'd be a little concerned about today, but apparently Ine was taken in all hush-hush style. Uh, in terms of morals, 40k for one of your officers is kind of... kind of not great. But, uh, you know, 40k is 40k. Dude, this jacket, man. Mr. Boyd, Kevin Paulson is here. He wants to talk. Kevin Paulson. Tell him to fuck off. Jack Boyd, super cop. <laughs> Why the half a million, Jack? Why? Lena, what, what happened? Uh -oh. Does this sum have some kind of special meaning? Oh, they're investigating him, huh? Lana, I don't know who told you about the half million, but it's much more complicated than you think. Oh, it's complicated, all right. It took me an hour to go over all the documents. There's even a few pictures and a lot of answers. Except for one thing. Why half a million? What documents? How did you get them? What's in them? I think you know very well what's in them. Uh -oh. And the one who sent them is obviously a big fan of your criminal talents. He even has a cute name for you. Copcake. Oh, Robespierre, that double-crossing son of a bitch. Are you always surrounded by old men? Well, I'm the opposite. I'm surrounded by children. Nine-year-old boys. From their first day of work, they gather in the smoking lounge telling jokes about what they'll do when they loot their first million. But it's more than just innocent jokes. It's quickly becoming a reality. They themselves are surprised how quickly everything happens. They buy their own houses, they buy a car, they get promoted. The first million is soon followed by a second, a third, a fifth. Like children, they have no idea what they're getting into. But I'm not like that, Anna. I'm not like them. You're saying you're not like them because you're only stealing half a million? I only meant you that... You know, Jack, I'm done worrying about people not taking me seriously. They'll know I mean business when my first act as public prosecutor is throwing the city's former police chief in prison. Lana, you can't just read over some papers like this and... I told you not to let him in! I'm sorry, Mr. Boyd. I tried to stop him, but he... Lana, we need to talk. Uh-oh. Everything's crumbling. Jack, you're so amazingly patient with people. After all the confusion over the past months, all the humiliations, it's really quite admirable. I wouldn't want to be in your shoes. <laughs> I gotta admit, I'm not nearly so patient. Send someone in here. Now! I've been thinking, Jack. When I take your place, I'll have a lot of, uh, a lot of opportunities. For example, I could arrest you. You know it wouldn't be hard to find a reason. You obviously don't want that, right? I don't want that either. Given your reputation, arresting you would make me very unpopular. And if we both don't want that, let's find a way out. My suggestion is you retire tomorrow. And I promise I'll let you leave in peace. Damn, I was so close to that half a million. I... I swear, Jack, if you... Ooh, man. Mr. Boyd, there's a call on line two. Mr. Boyd, you really have to take this call. Boyd! Jack, it's me. L Laura. Oh, it's I Jack, Laura. I don't know what you wanted to say to me, but please, just say it. Jack, I'm hanging up the phone. Laura, you... Oh, my God. Laura. Hey, you remember years ago, so many years I've lost track, but do you remember when Dylan was down with the chicken pox and he couldn't sleep? We kept him occupied until he passed out, and then we went downstairs, sat on the floor, opened a bottle of wine. Who could blame us? Well, we, we sat on the floor and opened our bills and joked about how poor we were. Remember? And then I jokingly asked if 
I'd be your hero if I made a million bucks? And you sat there lost in thought like you needed to seriously think about the answer. You were quiet for a while, and then you laughed and said that I'd be your hero even if I only made half a million. Do you remember, Laura? Hmm. Jack, Do I... Do you remember? Honestly, Jack, no, I don't remember. You don't remember, but that was... Jack, you've been chasing me down for so long to talk with me. For this? That's all you wanted to tell me? How can you not remember? It's important, Laura! It's... It's important. Goodbye, Jack. Damn, son. Mr. Boyd, are you all right? Oh boy, don't OD, Jack. Okay. One player mode, single player mode. Let's see what happens after this. Nice. Uh, I'm okay at Tetris. I don't know if I'm... Uh, oh, there's a rotate. I guess I should be using my mouse instead of the uh What? Isn't that three in a row? Instead of the uh keyboard like I was doing. Um do 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 Oh yeah, look at those skills. Oh, can I, can I maneuver this in? Look at that. Look at that. So everyone, welcome to uh, <laughs> a Dr. Mario ripoff featuring everyone's favorite policeman, Jack Boyd. Do, 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 do. Oh, that's right. I have to like get rid of these uh, these yellow things, right? Isn't that how you play Dr. Mario? There we go. I remembered how to do this. Oh, boy. That's... Okay. I'm glad this is like one of those ones that you are kind of like expected to not do well on. Yeah, yeah, I, I got the. Oh, okay. Um. All right, we'll just we'll just fail that that mission right there. Day one fifty four. Wait, are we already at the end? I did not think we'd already be at the end. We did not hit our half a million dollar checkpoint. That's unfortunate. We got pretty yes, close though. You caught me again. <laughs> And again, I promise this is the last time. And now you say again that I've said it all before, but I'm... Jack Boyd is awake. Jack Boyd? He opened his eyes? He can talk? Talking, yes. More like yelling, trying to escape from his room, brawling with the nurses. Good heavens, he's a tough son of a bitch. Day 155, it's December. Oh, he's already taken over. Jack! 
Hopefully that sneeze didn't catch. From the hospital? I thought you might be down a couple of days or even... Oh! I got my gray hair back. Emma, get me the mayor. Emma, please call the mayor of Freeburg, Stuart Rogers. Three one one four. Connect. It's urgent. This is Jack Boyd. Jack, you got to take better care of yourself. How's your? I'm Freeburg's police chief. I came to work. Stop trying to get in my way. Hmm. Someone causing you trouble? We just wanted to make sure somebody was holding down the fort while you um. While you were recovering. Yeah. But don't worry about a thing. I'll take care of everything uh, tomorrow morning. You won't be running into Paulson again. That's exactly what I wanted to hear. I'm glad we understand each other. Tell Martin Stett to call me. Uh, what? You don't know? Lieutenant Stett went missing about two weeks ago. Uh-oh. Um, interesting. I thought this game was only like 150 days. Maybe I am incorrect on that. Anyway, it looks like we're getting towards the end. Lana has figured out that we're corrupt. And yeah, pretty much everything's crashing all around us. We realize why he wanted to make half a million so that he could be Laura's hero and win her back. That was not really what she was concerned about. Um, I think if we remember back to one of the first episodes when he goes to see the psychologist, we realize that those pictures show him taking too many pills, perhaps knocking her over, getting into fights with Laura. Understandably, she could not take that anymore. So, yeah, yeah, things are not going well. Although, luckily, City Hall and the Mafia still love me. So, that worked out. You know, maybe we'll just have to take the, the half a million and run. Seems like a good plan to me. Alright, so we'll, we'll pick back up with Jack Boyd in the next episode. And until then, remember to take care of yourself. <laughs>